Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Mode. and today on Hot Mode, we're coming to you with your 2023 Grammys Fashion Roast and Review. It was bad. It, it just, it wasn't a good Grammys fashion outing in my opinion. I just don't think there were any looks that were so dynamic. One said, oh, wow. He said, oh, all right. Mm. Uh, and that was kind of it. So... Without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we had Adele wearing Louis Vuitton. Now, this is a custom look in a burgundy silk. We can see that it's pretty classic in terms of gown, cut, scooped neckline. It exposes a bit of cleavage. We can see that it has a three-quarter length sleeve, a pretty normal sort of tapered in waist, but there is a horizontal silk band that wraps around the waist. And then from out under that flows skirt downwards, hits the floor, nothing really, really crazy. The element that really is like the intriguing part is this matte lace silk sort of ruffle that flows out of this off the shoulder dress. I just don't really think that it is such a great detail. I don't hate, you know, a matte lace. It's essentially when created an embossment through a weave, but I also just think that it's so dynamic and so memorable and so exciting. I think we've been seeing a lot of Adele going really, really classic, really, really elegant sort of gowns, and that's fine. I don't mind that if that's what your aesthetic is, do your thing. I just don't think that this holds up to the weight that a lot of the other gowns that Adele has been wearing recently have and feel. I just don't think the burgundy velvet is really Really, really so dynamic. I think that the construction of the garment, it just, it's not horrible, but it's really not great. And I think that the detailing that people want us to look at just blah, novice -y. So it's unfortunate to say the very least. Next up we have Anita and she actually wore Versace. Now this isn't just off the runaway Versace. Well it is, but it's off the runaway Versace from 2003. So it's a 20 years ago way back reference. This is from the brand Spring 2003 collection. From what I heard, Anita sort of just tried this dress on and it fit perfectly. So her and her stylist just were like, yeah, it's a strapless sort of style, I believe, in leather that it is sheer, but there is knit element that does sort of showcase the body as well. So it's not just a cutout cutout. It has a little bit of dimension to it. And there's a floral sort of foliage that runs all the way up this leather bodice. Now at the knee element, making it this sort of mermaid skirt, we can see that it flares out and we have this creation of big, I want to call them fronds, but they're really frills of fabric that create a dynamic and intriguing organic element as a mermaid skirt. And we can also see that the skirt has a very large train, which also follows that frondy applique element. It's piped in pleats, I believe, and it creates an intriguing texture, an intriguing dynamic. I think that on Anita, you can't really see it the fabric and the texture and the reflection of the light as well as when you look at it on the runway. On the runway we can see that these sort of fronds are big and bold. They run all the way through the gown. They create this sort of texture and they make it look like from afar there's a sheer or transparent element to the skirt but in reality it's really the light actually just reflecting off of these leather sort of pieces and the way that they've been manipulated allows for this reflection to be very intriguing to be very dynamic do i maybe wish that anita had like gone for the headband and like done the full look the full glam like yeah i, I kind of do because i think that headwear it's helpful and important and is cool and also i understand a lot of celebrities like no 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 i don't want to do that because then you can't see my face and it's like listen we see your face all the time spicing it up a little bit it's kind of fun kind of intriguing kind of helps us feel a little bit alive so do I hate the dress no do I love the dress no it's intriguing and I like vintage I think it's cool that she's pulling it out I think it's great that it fit her perfectly I think it's just a preference dress if you love it great if you don't love it it's understandable. Next up we have BB Rexa wearing Moschino. Now this is a custom style. It is a halter experience that has a full cutout at the sternum area, exposes a lot of breasticle. We can see that there's a wrap element as well. It's a lot of draping, a lot of sort of moving, pulling in the silk. It fits honestly pretty well, I have to be completely honest. BB Rexa, we don't always see eye to eye in the fashion world. I think that honestly the way that the halter fits around the neck. I think it's great. I think it's cool. I think it's dynamic. I think the waist fit is good too. And the gathering right around the sort of crotchy area is not that offensive. The gloves and all that, is, I think it's cool. I think it's fine. I think it makes sense. I think it feels very Marilyn, but not Marilyn, but like 70s. And you know what? Shockingly, I'm not going to make my usual BB Rexa, why are you here quip? Because like, she looks good. Listen, she committed to the character. I think the hair and all that sort of stuff plays into this very 70s sort of feel. Farrah Fawcett 
eat your heart out. The fit of the dress is good. It's pretty simple in terms of there's not a lot of detailing and all that sort of element, but it's utilizing the gathering and the draping to be the dynamic part. I don't hate this. I think the fit is good. Next up, we have Beyonce. Now listen, Beyonce had a night. She made history as she usually does. But first, Beyonce like kind of didn't show up for a hot minute. And apparently it's because she was taking pictures with all of her Grammys in this custom Bellman look. It is a conical neckline. So it creates a really intriguing sort of cone element up top. It starts at the waist. It is a pretty tight sort of bodice. And then in reality, it juts up, reaches around the back of the neck and just creates a really cool cone element. There are pieces of gold that sit underneath. It looks like it's a sort of breastplate of sorts and it matches in with the hat that she is wearing, which love a hat, love a hat. Wish Beyonce had worn the hat on the red carpet, would have helped. A, a red carpet is nice, a red carpet is helpful. Everybody enjoys them. And then we can see that there is a legging attached to a very large shoe, but it's a peep toe, intriguing choice, and a intriguing heel. It's not really a stiletto, rather it's one sort of piece of shoe. It's in what I believe is some sort of velvet, at least from what I can see. Now we can see that it's an asymmetrical dress with a very high leg lift. It hits the floor just barely, barely touches it. And it's all in this very, very light, light, light pink. I would say from the waist up, I think it's a great look. Honestly, I think that the fit is cool. I think the silhouette of the conical shape is great. I think that you can even sort of put the gloves through the conical element. It all works. I think the matching of the gold from breastplate to the hat headpiece is cool. And also the glasses add a fun element, you know, all that. I think from the waist down, don't love it as much. We can see there's a little bit of wrinkling and crinkling going on. And also I don't love that we can see whatever the puckering is on that top left element of the leg. I just think it's hard to get those legging stretch catsuit pieces to really fit phenomenally and to sort of be seen without any imperfections. I also think that the shoes feel a little 2011, 2012. For me, it's a little too soon. Maybe for the kids on TikTok, they're happy about it. I just, I remember those days and they are kind of traumatic for me. So we can put like the, the 2011 Grammys kind of shoe out. It's good. We're okay. We don't need it. It's not my favorite. I appreciate the effort. I appreciate the idea. I appreciate the silhouette. I just think that there's little pieces of it that could be cleaned up a bit. Now, Beyonce's next look that she wore when she actually came to the Grammys is a custom Gucci style in a majority of a silver sort of metallic element. We can see that up top, it's a strapless dress. There is a light sort of beige corset that is scooped. It has the boning exposed and then and right at the waist and sort of wrapping around the breast area, we can see that this silver leather juts out. It becomes a big part of the dress, the element that really is the most dynamic. And honestly, I think there is a disconnect between the, the beige and the silver, but I think that the way that it fits makes it not as jarring as I think it usually could be. We can see that there's a big sort of frill that exposes one leg and sort of creates a high-low effect. And we can see that that frill falls all the way down, creates a large train, and then Beyonce just adds in a pair of like leather gloves. Maybe they're brown. I'm not really sure of the color. I think it's kind of blah in general. Like I think just the color and the use of the silver is just kind of blah. It's something we've seen a lot. I think it's something that isn't really super dynamic and super duper exciting and fun and cool and makes you feel like you're living in a renaissance, to be honest. But I will also say that I do think the fit of it is very good. I think that it fits her phenomenally. I don't think there's a little sort of pucker out of place. I think that that frond is really dynamic. Honestly, I think that it waves and moves really, really well. I think it adds a nice sort of intriguing line and texture to the dress that we hadn't really seen. I would do without the gloves personally, that's just me. So yeah, I have to give credit where credit is due. I think the Gucci team did a phenomenal job when it comes to the fit of this dress. I think it looks like it was just made perfectly for her. It was molded to her. I do think that again, it's kind of boring, but I think we're also moving out of a Gucci era that is very Alessandra Michele heavy. It's very whimsical and Gucci granny and all of that. And we have a new creative director named Sabato DeSarno who is coming in. And so I'm wondering if that's sort of what we're seeing here is this transition from one Gucci aesthetic to another. And I think that this current Gucci aesthetic is going to be a little bit more timeless and classic and things like that. So maybe that's what we're seeing. But 
Fit is great. Aesthetic could use a little bit of jazzing up. Next up, we have Camila Cabello, and she is wearing Pat Bow, which is a New York-based brand. We can see that it's pretty much a high-waisted black skirt that has a bejeweled bra top. It's made out of whatever these white little crystals are. They're sort of circular elements that create a triangular effect, and then there's some sort of flower right on top of the nipple to sort of shield that from public view. Then we can see as we move down, there's essentially just a black skirt with a high slit. It's pretty blah and very boring and very uninteresting. And listen, I get it. It's very American and very sort of sportswear and I'm into it for the most part, but I just think that it falls really flat. I think if you're doing red carpet, like you have to be a little bit more dynamic. I think this looks like something you could have whipped up anywhere. It just doesn't feel super fun and exciting and cool. Listen, I know that Papo is more of a commercial sort of brand, but if we're gonna do red carpet, let's do red carpet. Explore your house codes, put them out there, let them be seen by the people. This is something that the people don't wanna see. Next up we have Cardi B and she wore Gaurav Gupta. This was a look from, I believe, the spring 2023 haute couture season. And Gaurav is an Indian haute couturier who shows in Paris. Honestly, it's a really cool, look. Is it in the usual Cardi vibe? I would say, yeah, I do think it is. We can see that the look is made up of, from the waist down, pretty much a silk skirt with a long sort of train in this really gorgeous blue. But we can see also at the waist, there is this panel that begins right around the waist and sort of falls right to the, the top of the hip. And it looks like it's a piece of fabric that is gathered very, very tightly. And it begins to create this sort of wave of blue. And as we can see, it sort of lumps onto the other side, the other hip, and sort of then moves up the actual waist area and then becomes a gorgeous top. It has an intriguing sort of cutout, a very sort of long cutout that almost exaggerates and sort of distorts the body. I think we've talked about the distortion of the body a little bit. I would say this probably isn't the most attractive distortion of the body just because you're creating an asymmetrical sort of hip area and I don't think that it's ugly I just think that it's not usually what you see or what you think of when you think of sort of distorting the body from a fashion context we can see that there's a very long strip of cutout that exposes a lot of the stomach and then as we move up we can see that it creates a little plunging neckline and then this pleat comes up and wraps around the shoulder, then wraps around half of Cardi's face, and then creates a big sort of swag that falls out on the other side of the shoulder. It's beautiful, it's 3D, it creates water fall and water flow effect. It's kind of simple in terms of Cardi, I would say normally she's a little bit more but I think that here it's very beautiful, it's very simple and pretty and gorgeous, and at the same time it's very sort of technically difficult. You have to make sure that you understand how the piece is gonna move, how the piece is going to stay up, how it's going to create this effect. You can see that it's a little bit glossy, so I wonder whether it's been sort of plasticized to a degree, whether that's like adding a little bit of resin, whether it just has sort of elements of metallic sort of threads woven through in order to give it structure. Who really knows I do not but I do think that it's a cool dynamic look. And at the same time, do I think that it's sort of more traditionally beautiful? Do I think that it adds an elegance and a glamor? And do I think that Cardi also does a good job of wearing the garment rather than letting it wear her? Yeah. Honestly, I do. I think that it's beautiful. I think it's intriguing. I think it's cool. It's nice. We then saw Cardi wear Paco Rabanne. This is a look by Julian DeSena, and I believe that it's from like spring 2021. The Ready to Wear collection, but Paco Rabanne over the weekend, passed away, RIP, the legend, we stand Paco Rabanne. And so I wonder if that's what Cardi is sort of doing here. I wonder if she is trying to sort of pay homage to an iconic, great designer. You can see that the dress, if we look up close, is actually made up of a bunch of different pieces of triangular metal. They're little sheets of metal. They're done, I believe, in a darker sort of silver. And for whatever reason, I can't tell if it's the light. It seems to have a purple hue to it, but I believe that that's probably just the light reflecting off of the dress. Now we can also see that either their placement is where the pointy end is up, the pointy angle, or we can see that the pointy angle is placed down and the dress right at sort of the waist area accentuates Cardi's hips. And we can also see that in reality, it's pretty much a chainmail piece of clothing because it's literally made up of exclusively 
chains. And then these little triangular pieces are attached to the chain and there's nothing underneath it, which is even more dynamic and exciting. We can also see that Cardi is wearing a headpiece that has a chain mail effect up top. And then the little sort of metal sheets that wrap in right at temples and come down and come down along the sides as well. I think that Cardi is probably paying homage to Paco Rabanne I, and I appreciate it. I think that a lot of the times fashion designers that are iconic and wonderful don't get their dues when they pass away. So it's nice to see that Cardi is doing that. I also think the fit of it is great. Normally with Paco Rabanne, it's very static and you should be very sort of thin in order to wear it and things like that. But I think Cardi is proving that you can have curves and you can still sort of wear these chain mail pieces. You can wear that Paco Rabanne very 1960s style. I'm happy to see it. It makes me really feel nice and warm and joyous inside. Next up, we have Charlie D'Amelio wearing Carolina Herrera. Now it's a strapless black dress with sort of large tulle poofs at the side to sort of create like a faux pannier effect. And then a black shoe, a little pump, if you will. Listen, I like Carolina Herrera. I think it's a great brand. I think that this makes sense for a lot of the Carolina sort of women. I think Charlie's also meant to be a little bit more commercial. And so I get it, but I want it to be pumped up more. I think that she should be a little bit more dynamic. I think that there are really, really great Carolina looks that she could wear that could really be exciting and exhilarating and fun and memorable. And the thing is, I think Charlie is still dressing like she is going to junior prom. And the thing is, that's great. She's young. I understand it. That's wonderful. That's how you want to dress. But like, it's the Grammys. We need to step it up. You are the queen of TikTok. You know, you run it. It's the thing that everybody knows you for. We need a little bit more excitement, a little bit more drama, a little bit more dynamicism. It just falls very, very flat. Not a horrible dress. I think that it fits for Carolina. It makes sense. I think for Charlie, it low-key fits as well. I just think at the Grammys, there needs to be a little bit more of a heightening, a little bit more storytelling, a little bit more exhilaration because we're not getting that. And to be honest, we haven't been getting that for a while. So like it needs to be stepped up. Like I'm tired of the Charlie D'Amelio. Oh, blah, boring, uninteresting train. I want to get off. I want to pull the, st the string. Let me off at the next stop. Thank you. Next up we have Doja Cat. She wore a Versace. Now this is a custom style. So the dress is made up of black vinyl. Now that's a very sort of S and M fabric. If you don't know, it's usually what it's closely associated to. And we can see that this vinyl is done in a asymmetrical gown style. It's very, very heavily sort of nipped in at the waist and that trumpet skirt sort of falls out and creates a big sort of fan of black vinyl and creates a little bit of a train effect. We can see that there are matching opera gloves in black vinyl as well. You we can see that there's that twist on that one right shoulder. Now that apparently is an iconic Versace twist. I didn't know that. Apparently that's what it is. Listen, vinyl often can look very, in my opinion, like cheap and tacky and boring and gauche and gross. And I think that we moved out of the vinyl aesthetic recently, which I appreciate and I'm kind of happy about. I also think with Doja Cat, for the most part, Doja Cat does crazy. She does over the top. She very much so does things that are honestly like shocking and she commits to the character. But I think also on occasion, she wants to do something that's a little bit more glamorous. And my thing is, as I say, if you carry the team on your back and you want to have a little moment where you do something a little bit more, you know, mainstream, a little bit more understandable to the everyday person, I'm fine with that. And I think that's what she's doing here. And at the same time, she's not just wearing like a black silk dress with a asymmetrical sort of style and saying, all right, here I am. I'm on a platter. No. Instead, Doja Cat says, I'm going to do an unconventional textile, something that's a little bit still shocking and jarring and kind of scary. But at the same time, she makes it look beautiful. It's stunning. The way that it fits her is fantastic. I think that the lack of puckering going on is really, you know, something that we should be saying good for Versace. It's not an easy thing to work with vinyl unless you really, really work with it a whole lot. So I like the look. I think it's cute. Is it my favorite Doja Cat look ever? No, it's not. But I also don't think that it's meant to be. I think that it's meant to be a little bit more glamour, a little bit more sexy, a little bit more sort of siren. And I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. And at the same time, she's doing it in a textile that most other people wouldn't wear on their craziest of days. I appreciate this. Next up, we have Dylan Mulvaney and she is wearing Christian Christian Siriano, and you know it's rare that I compliment Christian Siriano, but the fit of this dress is goddamn immaculate, I have to say, and it's very rare to see something fit so, so well in general. 
let alone from a Christian Siriano standpoint. Although I will say for the most part, he's usually very clean. It's a halter style with a waist cutout on both sides. It's very geometric in this very dynamic red, I would say. Then what falls down creates a little bit of a train. And then we have opera gloves in red as well. Honestly, it's not the most original design whatsoever. Like if I look at it, I say, oh, Valentino, but it's not Valentino, it's Christian Siriano. So the thing is, listen, is Christian Siriano original? No. Do I think that Christian Siriano here has done a fantastic job of fitting? The fit of it is phenomenal. I can't stop looking at it and I can't stop seeing how there's such little puckering of that dress. Like it just, it was made for Dylan. It's not really super exciting. It's not really super dynamic. I just think that the fit is great and I appreciate that. But besides that, you know, it's Christian Siriano, so it's pretty boring. But fit, well done. Next up, we have her in Bach Mai. Now, this is a scoop neckline cocktail dress, and then there is a sheer skirt placed underneath with a black velvet. It looked like Jackson Pollock sort of strings of, of paint that run along. It's not my favorite dress, to be completely honest. I think it's kind of blah. I think it's kind of boring. I think the silhouette is like fine. I think the velvet short cocktail dress is okay, but I think that the skirt underneath, it pulls it away. I also think the proportions are tough. Like it just makes her look short. I don't think that the way that it hits the floor is really, really great. I just think a different Bach My dress would have worked here, something a little bit longer, maybe a high-low style. I just don't think that this skirt underneath the dress works. So it's unfortunate. The proportions aren't good. Next up, we have the quarter of controversy himself, Harry Styles, who arrived on the red carpet wearing an Egon Lab look in collaboration with Swarovski Crystals. We have a Harlequin jumpsuit sans shirt made up entirely of crystal chainmail, and it certainly is something. Egon Lab is a brand that is based in France and it is on the up and coming menswear circuit. So I'm not really super shocked by the use of them. I know that this is a custom look. It doesn't come from the runway. And to be completely honest, I don't entirely hate the outfit, just the outfit. I just don't think that this outfit is great in the context that it's in. Do I think that this jumpsuit is something that Harry Styles has been wearing on tour and all of that and that's great and that's wonderful and it's cool? Yes, I think that the fit of it is nice. I think that it's not puffy, it's not baggy, it's I think just kind of the perfect sort of length and I think that's hard to do with crystals. I think the motif is very sort of Harry Styles. It's bright and it's loud and it's colorful and that's just what he does. If it was something that I saw Harry Styles wear at Madison Square Garden or the O2 or something like that, I'd be like, sure, great, lovely. I just think in the context of the Grammys, it's like too casual. I think the lack of shirting underneath doesn't really allow it to be taken super duper seriously in this context. I think that doing sort of an overall style jumpsuit is fine in other places. I just don't think that it feels Grammy red carpet appropriate. I know that the Grammys does sort of constitute showing a decent amount of skin, so I won't take points off of Harry for doing it. It just feels like it's lackluster, even though it's literally a crystal encrusted jumpsuit. And I think that's the issue is the jumpsuit is very casual. I think that the motif, it's fine. It's just still pretty casual, I would say. And then the crystals, yes, we can see that it's made out of crystals, but again, it doesn't constitute this sort of heightened, glamorous, opulent elegance. And I think that's the issue with the look, is it just doesn't exude all that much. Yes, is it Harry Styles in a jumpsuit? Sure. And for the Harry Styles stands, if you think he's super hot and cool and great and wonderful, great. But I do not think that the outfit in and of itself is some fantastic moment that should be loved and beloved. I don't hate Egon in any other context, in the context that I think that this look belongs in. Wonderful, fine, cool, great. But in this context, it feels too casual, it feels too underdressed, it feels too sort of schlubby, and it just doesn't really say or do all that much. And so that's my Harry Styles issue, is there needed to be something else to really heighten the mood, heighten the look, heighten the code element of it. It just feels too, I just think that this is a little bit too much of Harry relying on Harry and not relying on the clothing to really tell a story. And that's 
my biggest issue. We then saw Harry Styles perform in a custom look from Gucci, and it is a jumpsuit as well, but this time it is a fully encrystalled, fully sequined jumpsuit that is fully fringed so that when Harry danced around on stage, he looked like Chewbacca, if Chewbacca, I don't know, happened to fall into like a pit of glue and then happened to also fall in a pit of sequins right after that. And I don't mind it. I think it's fun. I think it's a cool sort of style when it comes to performance wear. I think performance wear oftentimes can be really hard to make intriguing and elegant and look luxurious. And I think that Harry's look from Gucci here does that. I think it's loud and it's proud and it's over the top. It has a great sort of sense of movement. I think the cut of it is baggy, but I don't think that it's awkwardly baggy. I think it's just the perfect amount. I just genuinely think that this would have been like a better red carpet look. You know what I mean? Listen, it's not some four piece suit, three piece suit, two piece suit. It's not any kind of suit, but it just feels more exciting and memorable and cool. And I think that obviously it probably does better, you know, performing on stage, but at the same time, never hurts. It just doesn't feel all that thought out. And that's a problem. Listen, if Harry wants to look like, I don't know, Chewbacca at the gay bar, I'm into it. I'm fine with it. You know, it's cool with me. Next up, we have Jack Harlow wearing Ernest W. Baker, who is a menswear designer and brand. I, I don't know where it's based. But it's definitely one of the more up and coming menswear brands. It's been around for a few years. So Jack is wearing this tan suit. He has a little sweater vest underneath of it and then a matching tan shirt and matching tan tie. And then a pant that falls sort of down, black patent leather shoes and black gloves. Let's, let's break it down. The jacket fits fine. It's not really great. It's not really awful. It's fine. The sleeves are really crinkled and wrinkled. And I think that's my biggest issue with Jack Harlow is the fit. Like it just never fits all that well. And then when we get down to the pants, I think that's where we can see it is like, there's a lot of bunching going on. It looks like the pants and the thigh is too, too small. That's why you have all that literal bunching. And then the way that the pants fall, is kind of awkward. I just think that they look poorly tailored. The front crease is kind of weird too. And I think also like when you're looking at it, you can see that at the thigh they fit a little bit too tightly and that just throws off the idea of like a cool effortless casual suiting moment. And then also you have the pants that hit at that black patent leather shoe and it just looks awkward and bad and strange. I like the idea of the sweater vest underneath. I think that's cool. I think it's different for Jack Harlow, but it doesn't really get all that much play being underneath the suit jacket that's buttoned up. And then the shirt and the tie, I also like the idea of, again, I just don't think you really get all that much out of it in the sweater. I just think it's meant to be sort of a placeholder in between the jacket and the shirt because they're the same color, but I just don't think that it does all of that much. As for the gloves, I don't really get it. I don't really understand them. I don't really like them. I think they're ill-fitting. I think the fingers are awkward and kind of like hot dog fingers everywhere, everywhere, everything everywhere all at once. That's just what it reminds me of, except they're like burnt. It's awkward. I just don't understand why Jack Harlow can't ever find a suit that like fits, or if they try to fit the suit to him, they do such an awful job every single time. So long story short, Jack Harlow is still a Harl now when it comes to his fashion choices. They're, they're awful. Next up we have Casey Musgraves wearing Valentino. She's wearing a fully feathered cape and a matching or lighter shade pink jumpsuit underneath with a little pink velvet shoe. Listen, I love the cape. I think it's beautiful. I think the colors are wonderful. I think the volume and the depth of these feathers is cool and nice and easy and luxurious. You know, you feel like you could put your little hand through it, run it through and it wouldn't feel barren. So that's good. The jumpsuit underneath, kind of blah, kind of boring. Color is very light. And I just feel like, you know what, maybe we should have just done a glove attached to it. I just think the little hands poking out, it's kind of awkward, especially considering like the jumpsuit goes all the way down and we can't see any skin down there. It's very Casey Musgrave. She loves pink, things like that. Cool. It just feels a little bit basic. Kind of blah, kind of boring. Kind of been there, kind of done that. I love it. I love the cape in and of itself, you know, take the cape out, I'd say it's a fantastic cape and I think it is. I just think the styling underneath of it is awkward and the shoe, I hate the shoe. It looks like a weird schoolgirl shoe that doesn't match the white socks that it's just, it's weird. I think it's just underneath is weird. The cape is great, everything else, 
I could really do without. Next up, we have Kendrick Lamar wearing a full Martine Rose. Look, Martine Rose, if you do not know, is one of the great menswear designers of this generation. She's fantastic. She's smart. She's worked with a bunch of different brands and has sort of built up their accessories departments very, very well. And she's more of a behind the scenes designer. We, we would call that like a, a designer's designer because everybody looks at her and is like, mm. She knows what she's doing. So Kendrick is wearing a look from the fall 2023 collection, I believe. It's pretty much a navy blue and light blue track jacket. There's a shirt, striped shirt, I believe, a printed tie, like a printed dad tie, a pair of gray slacks, a baseball hat that says LA on it, and then the shoes, which are Martine Rose's specialty. They are a collaboration with Nike. They're like loafer sneakers with little pumps at the back. I think it's cool. I think it's different. I think it's not super duper normal traditional menswear. You know what I mean? You have the shirt, you have the tie, you have the pants, which I think traditional menswear. But I think that the windbreaker is kind of like a nice additive to it, to be honest. I think it switches it up. It's not a blazer. And you know, I know I've talked about casualness and all that sort of stuff, but the idea of the shirt and the tie and the pant is there. It's just that you're sort of giving it a little bit more of a street wear or sport wear edge by adding a windbreaker over top. And I think that that's okay. I also think the fact that it's zipped up to a degree also adds a little bit more of a dressed up feeling to it, even though it's literally a windbreaker. The sneakers are strange and weird, but I like them. I think they play off the colors of the jacket, even though it's obviously not the same shades. And I think the baseball hat adds just a nice little effect to it as well. I think this is kind of fun and different and cool, and I would have liked to have seen it on the red carpet, you know, rather than just Kendrick accepting an award, but I'm happy to see Martine Rose make it to the red carpet. So. I'm intrigued. Next up we have Kim Petras and she opted for a vintage Victor Costa dress. It is very 80s I would say. It has a little off the shoulder sort of ruffle up top. It's a sort of matte little bodice in red and then a sort of puffy balloon hem skirt with a big long red veil over top. I presume that they went for the all red because unholy and you know red is a very sort of scandalous color and the performance that Sam Smith and Kim Petras did was also literally called, I don't know, demonic worship. Because it feels like currently here, at least in the United States, we're very much so back on the satanic panic train. People really love to look into things. And I know that people are going to say, oh, you know, you're getting political on here and da 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 da. All I'm going to say is for everybody that thinks that like a lot of these brands and these designers, you know, some of them are really thinking and promoting satanic worship and the devil and all those other things that people put in their heads. Most people that work in fashion, particularly celebrity stylists, don't have time to wipe their own asses, let alone formulate some sort of strategic way of showcasing the joys of satanic worship. I don't know if you noticed, but like the red carpets aren't really that great. So, you know, they're not really focusing their energy on them too much. And I, I don't think that they're they're pushing that narrative either. I digress. I think the dress is kind of cute. I think also when you put it next to Sam's look, it very much so has the same effect, the bubble hem, the red silk, and all of that. And I think that like that works. I think that Kim and Sam were going for a very sort of in tandem moment. And I think they did a good job. Do I love the dress and the shoes and the veil? By itself, no, but as an ensemble, it's okay. I'm fine with it. We should also then talk about Sam Smith and their look because it also added to it. I love this. I know that I've gone on the record and I've said there are certain looks that Sam Smith has done that I do not like, and that's fair. But I love this look. I think that this is Sam Smith doing elegance. Like, it's an elegant look. So let's work our way down when it comes to this look. We have to talk about the stovepipe hat. I like it. I think it's cool. And then the fact that you have this stovepipe hat, which references, you know, traditional sort of menswear from, I don't know, the 1860s, 1870s, 1880s. I don't know exactly the decades. And then you've added this sort of little red lace veil right up over the eyes. I think it's cool. I think that it's taking this idea of a veil, which is more sort of traditional for women to wear and is much more sort of feminine associated and mixing it and combining it with a stovepipe hat, which is much more traditionally associated with masculinity, I think it's a cool way to blur that sort of gender line and that gender sort of construct. And I think that that is what Sam Smith has sort of really been going for recently. And I think that's a cool thing to do. Genuinely, I really, really do. I think that the hat looks great. I think it's a cool reference. And I think when you add in this large sort of cape jacket with the big sort of ruffle flounce at the neck that falls down into a balloon hem in red, 
I like it even more. The look is a custom look by Valentino. And now again, Satanic Panic, blah, 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 blah. You want to say whatever you want to say. Valentino Garavani has been doing red since literally the 1960s. Like it's a signature Valentino color. So you can either look at it as that way or you could look at it as it's literally a brand house coat and like it's red. Do with it what you will. But I love the shape of this coat. I think that it has a very sort of dandy feeling and a very dandy effect. Dandyism has been around for what, 100 years plus? And I think that it's cool to see. I think this idea of taking like a frock coat sort of vibe, giving it a full silk makeover, doing it in this bright sort of brash red, and then doing a balloon hem makes it feel a little bit like it's a balloon hem dress, which is what balloon hems usually go on. But I think it's cool to see it on a sort of cape coat. I think it's nice. I think it's fun. I think the sleeves work. I think the red gloves is a great accessorization to it. And the cane. I love the cane. I think it just pulls the whole concept and the notion of like this sort of modern dandyism together. I think that honestly, Sam Smith is one of the best dressed of the night, without a doubt. Like I really do. I appreciate it. And that's my thing. I'll say if I hate a look and I'll say if I love a look. I. I'm preferential to a balloon hem and Sam Smith has done it well. And then when you see the two looks of Kim and Sam together, looks good. Into it, same vibe, very happy, wonderful, thank you. Next up we have Lizzo who wore a Dolce & Gabbana. It's Dolce & Gabbana, so like, I'm just not gonna like it. We'll break down the look for those that need it. She pretty much wore a cape that wrapped around the head, created, in my opinion, like a faux Yves Saint Laurent sort of style way back from like the 1960s, the hooded veil style. It's, it's, it's intriguing. We can tell that it's a cape because it has the slits in it and that Lizzo's hands are moving through it. It's in this bright burnt orange and it's covered in flowers. Although I think that honestly, like it should have been covered in a lot more flowers. I don't think it's as dense with artificial fabric flowers as it should be. And that's a big issue in my opinion. I like the silhouette. I like the color on Lizzo. I like Lizzo doing a sort of different, intriguing, cool shape. But I think that there are elements like the fabric flowers that should have been much more full. Then Lizzo sort of takes the cape off and exposes a light orange dress underneath. The bustier is made up of orange and then it has silver crystals that run down and sort of create like faux boning. This looks bad. I think this looks really, really bad. I think it looks really, really cheap. I don't think that it looks like something even Dolce & Gabbana would be proud to put themselves on. And my issue is Lizzo's been doing it really, really well recently. So I don't understand this aspect of it. I don't think it looks good. I don't think it looks luxury. I don't think it looks nice. I think it looks awful. The skirt, I also think is just not, not the vibe either. I think the color doesn't really work. I think that the fabric doesn't really work with the top. And then I think you still have this burnt orange cape that falls around Lizzo's body. And I don't think the look is good. So honestly, I just don't think that this look from a technical and quality standpoint is at the level that we've been seeing Lizzo have recently. And I think that's even more disappointing than the fact that it's Dolce & Gabbana. Next up we have Marin Morris wearing a custom off-white look. It is a gray knit dress that's pretty sheer to be completely honest. It's finished off with a little sort of lace hem. And then we can also see that this long plunging exposing cowl neck is also trimmed with that sort of lace. Although I think it might be like a knit lace. I think it's knit into the actual dress, which I think is a cool sort of intriguing development. But listen, I like a cowl neck. I think they're cool. I think that if you go for it, like props to you because I wouldn't just because I would feel self-conscious, but I think Marin Morris is doing a pretty good job here. The gray is nice. I think the sheer element is cool. I think the cowl fits. It's intriguing. It's beautiful. It plunges. I'm okay with this. Do I obviously wish it was a little bit more pumped up? Sure. But considering that a knit cowl neck is a knit cowl neck and reminds me of Alexander McQueen, it makes me happy. So I will take it. Next up we have Miguel and he is wearing a full look from Diesel by Glenn Martins. Pretty much a Diesel sort of hooded jacket in denim and it's like a bleach denim so we can see that it's blue up top and then as we reach around sort of the waist area on the actual jacket and the armpit area on the sleeves of the jacket it begins to go white almost like it was bleached and I think that Glenn Martins' Diesel is playing with denim. It's trying to sort of make denim cool and intriguing although denim is cool and intriguing but developing it giving it a little bit more elegance and all of that and I think that it's being done. It's almost like it's a tailcoat kind of vibe to it. We can see that there's pretty much a simple tank top, rib tank top underneath, and then a pair of pant shoes. It's a denim pant that also is attached to these 
cowboy boots, all denimified. It's intriguing. It's cool. I think it's different for menswear. And I think for the Grammys, like, it kind of makes sense. Is it maybe, quote unquote, a little bit more casual in terms of its jeans and a tank top? Yes. But I think the cut of the actual jacket gives it a little bit more structure, a little bit more intrigue, a little bit more elegance. And I think the fact that you're doing, like, a panta shoe is also nice and fun and cool and different. I like it. Next up, we have Olivia Rodrigo wearing Mew Mew. Now, I believe that this is a custom look. In my opinion, disappointing, which is pretty Olivia Rodrigo usually at this point. I just like, she's not a fashion girl. I don't think she ever will be a fashion girl. I don't think she wants to be a fashion girl. And you know what? I want to say that I accept it, but like, I don't. I don't. Because she's never really even tried. That's my problem. She wears like a slinky dress and that's it. Always. A sheer dress with some seamage going on in the center. There's a, a black bandeau sort of bra and then a black boy short underneath. It's just like blah shit. Sorry, it, it bores me. It's uninteresting. It's not memorable. It's not exciting. Like, where is the intrigue? Where is the interest? Where is the details? Also, like, it's Mew Mew. Like, you could have just wore a little Mew Mew mini skirt and like a little jacket and everybody wouldn't have went buck wild. But we wore a black slip dress that's sheer and that's it and i don't know there's just not really anything to it and i just genuinely feel that that is also what most of olivia rodrigo's red carpet moments are next up we have paris hilton and she is wearing celine this is a custom look by eddie slaman it's a halter style dress it's fully crystallized it's a black dress full of silver crystals and so that's where you get that sort of poppy effect we can see that it has a halter style strap that wraps around the neck and then there is a large sort of exposure of the sternum and a little bit of cleavage right at the center it falls down hits the floor it's like a gathered crystallization listen i'm into paris doing crystals and all that and that's what she does and i also know that she just had a baby so like congrats to her i just don't love the dress i think it's kind of blah i think it's kind of boring i think it's kind of uninteresting i don't think it's super duper memorable and i also know that that's very celine not that it's blonde boring and interesting and un super duper memorable i just think that it's a little bit more simple it's a little bit more casual but i just feel like i need a little more from paris if the colors were different or if there was an intriguing motif that ran through the dress i'd, I'd be like oh okay it's just a little too simple for me listen i'm happy for paris but I'm bored. Next up we have Pharrell who is wearing Ernest W. Baker. Again, this is a menswear brand and we can see that Pharrell is wearing a red quilted tracksuit. In my opinion, the red leather, the quilting, that whole vibe. I know that Pharrell is on the board for Karl Lagerfeld Met Gala exhibit that is coming up in May. And so I'm wondering if like he's trying to sort of nod to that with the red quilted style. Could be, could not be, I don't know, but it's intriguing. Do I love the look? No, it's fine. It's Pharrell, so like I appreciate that he always takes a little bit of a risk. He always goes for something a little bit more intriguing. You have this big, probably a faux fur coat, probably like a faux mink in brown over top, and then you have a black sort of cowboy boot. He has his little Tiffany collaboration glasses on and a baseball hat. I appreciate the going for it. I just don't think that it delivers. It feels a little bit discombobulated. The fit of the tracksuit pants is awkward, even though it's like a flare. It still looks a little weird. The black boots I don't really get. Next, let's talk about Shania Twain wearing Harris Reed. Now, this is a look from Harris Reed's fall 2023 collection, and it's pretty much a polka dot flare suit that's sequined. And uh, listen, I like the hat. I think it's fun. I think it's frisky. I think it's cool. I think it's a headpiece and we don't really get a lot of headpieces. The shape is great. The, the height of it is exciting. We move down to the jacket and honestly, I kind of like it. There is no shirt on the Harris Reed look from the runway. And then there's a black sort of bustier underneath the jacket. I just think that Listen, I'm not saying Shania had to go full nothing underneath, but I think maybe incorporating a polka dot element or, you know, doing sort of like a tan skin color match course it would have given the effect because I think the issue really becomes when you see the way that the jacket closes, it obviously like fans out in the middle and sort of creates more of like a tailcoat effect. But we can sort of see the little black corset underneath and, and it takes away a little fantasy of like a sheer or a nothing underneath top. As we move down, we can see that the pants fit fine and then we get to the knee and it flares out. It becomes a lot more dramatic, a lot more over the top. Now what we can see is as the pants hit the bottom, we can see that there's sort of a large cuff. I'm sure that that's some sort of piece of ribbon that essentially sort of creates that large shape and holds the sort of circular flare in place, which I get, which I like, which I'm happy with. But my one issue is we can see it through the actual garment. And that's where I feel like I lose a little bit of Again, the fantasy. That's the issue for me. And I did watch Red Carpet, so 
I could see that even in movement, you could see the sort of little ribbon that, again, creates that shape and holds that shape. And I think that it's just fine tuning little details like this is important. The polka dot sequins are okay. I will say again, like I just think when we see the sequins, we can see that there's not a clean sort of line around the actual polka dot. We can see that it sort of juts out because the sequins sort of jutting out of the black of the circle. Obviously, again, I get it. It's details, but those details are important. They do add up. It's something that you need to make sure that we're keeping coherent and consistent. So listen, I like that Shania Twain went for it. I like the look in general. I just think that there are detail elements that need to be updated, need to be sort of refined and fine-tuned in order to really make it a hard-hitting look that is untouchable. But those things need to be fixed and addressed first. Next up we have Steve Lacey who is wearing Saint Laurent. This is a double-breasted black blazer with a pair of pants, a slack of some sort, like a little, you know, a little suit pant that falls pretty far down and hits a black pointed toe boot. But the thing that I do think is intriguing is the fact that you really can't tell unless you look up close that the pant is not part of the boot or the boot is not part of the pant. And the only thing that really sort of throws you out of it is the way that the pants hit the boot. We can see that there's a little bit of excess of fabric, the way that it falls. And I think had we like fixed that maybe, it would have just delivered, ugh. But I have to say, I like the little white color matching the boot so well that if you're not looking up close, you would actually believe that the boot is a part of the pant. And it's rather nice. I will say the suit fits good up top in terms of blazer. I think besides the way that it falls, the suit pants fit okay too. And I think that Steve Lacey is obviously proving that He's somebody to watch when it comes to the fashion iconography. So my thing is we just have to fix the one bad habit of the pant falling that way and we'll be good. Next up we have SZA wearing New Glare. Now this is from the fall 2023 collection that just came out and Casey Cadwallader did honestly a pretty amazing job with this. Like the illusion is really truly there. SZA is wearing a black dress with a whole lot of cutouts that sort of spiral around the body. I will say that obviously when we look up close, we can sort of see that there is the puckering, but from a distance, you really can't tell. It looks almost like the dress doesn't have sheer panels, which is what is sort of giving the illusion that the dress is being held up exclusively by these black strips. And also, I think it's nice to see Mugler for these illusion cat suits sort of doing these illusion dresses, which gives a little bit more red carpet, evening wear effect, and a little bit more of an evening wear red carpet vibe, and it's kind of necessary. I think the short skirt works on SZA. I think the proportions are also really, really good. I also think it's nice to see that this kind of dress can be worn by somebody that's not a model on the runway. Rather, it's somebody that has a little bit more body to them, and honestly, they look fantastic in it. I think SZA looks really nice. I think it's cute. I think it's cool. I think it's a nice sort of illusion in terms of fashion, you know, concept and construction. I'm okay with this. Next up we have Taylor Swift who wore a custom Roberto Cavalli look. And now I know everybody's gonna say, Luke, this is a reference to Midnight, hence the navy blue with the little star embroidery that looks like stars in the sky. And like, that's great, but like, I don't know. It's a crop top and a high-waisted skirt. It's kind of blah, it's kind of boring. I'm happy that it has the reference to Midnight and that's great and that's wonderful and I'm happy for the Taylor Swift stance. I'm not happy for me though, because this is blah and boring and uninteresting and just feels like it doesn't deliver anything exciting. I don't blame Cavalli entirely, to be honest. I think that it's kind of Taylor Swift's hesitancy to do exciting things. Like she goes and she does something exciting and then everything else is blah and boring and uninteresting. And I just feel like this could have been made by anybody. I could have made it. So to crude stitch together and bing, bang, boom, you have a crop top. Will I say that I do think that it fits very, very well? There really is not any issues in terms of fit. I do think obviously the embroidery is nice. I think it's sweet. I think it's really, really pretty. I think if it wasn't at the Grammys, I'd be like, yeah, this is cool. I'm into it. I, you know, I, I get the midnight reference, but I just feel like Taylor should be doing a little bit more. A little bit more excitement, a little bit more intellectual, a little bit more thought out, a little bit more oomph. And I just don't get that feeling. I feel like this is Taylor Swift that I saw in 2013 and now I'm seeing it in 2023. There's not that much difference here. I just think that her and Cavalli could have worked on something that'd be much more memorable. And that's my real issue here. The fit is fine. It's just boring. 
And lastly, we have Viola Davis, who is wearing a Naeem Khan look. It is a fully sequined dress, and she wore this to accept her EGOT. Congrats to Viola Davis, an icon, a legend, a star. As for the dress, I don't love it. It's just me. I understand partially maybe it's a reference to The Woman King, which is the film that she was in. Happy for her and all that for the EGOT. I just, I don't love the dress. I think the, the colors and the graphic design, it's a preference thing. It's just not my preference. I, I don't think that it's really that chic. I don't really think it's that elegant. The graphics are a little awkward and weird. Like the bottom is very checkerboard and then the top is RuPaul's Drag Race top. It doesn't feel super combobulated. If there's a reference to it, great. I'm happy. That's wonderful. It's just, I don't think it is a EGOT accepting level look. And that's my real issue is, you know, EGOT accepting level look. That's what I expect from Viola. And I know that she can deliver that. So I think I'm just a little disappointed. And by a little, I mean a lot. So let's talk about a best and worst in the best. I'm gonna put Sam Smith in that Valentino look. I think it's cool, I think it's intriguing, I think it's fun. I'm gonna put Cardi B in Gaurav Gupta. I appreciated that. I'll put Miguel in Diesel. I think that's kind of it. As for the worst, Olivia Rodrigo in the Mew Mew, Jack Harlow, Harry Styles, Taylor Swift. That is the end of this Grammys 2023 video. Please let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear all of your thoughts and opinions. I will see you guys in the next video and TTYL.